have started with health food nuts and probiotic yogurts. But now, from happy coffee and vinegar cocktails to Shark Tank supplements and keto diets, it seems that gut health products are all the rage nowadays. However, a focus on the intestinal tract is far more important than just fodder for the vegan internet forums and my mom's home marketing friends. <laughs> no, this is a real revolution in medical science. Poop! <laughs> or to be more wordy, the human microbial ecosystem. According to Professor Julian Davies from the University of British Columbia, we are only 10% human, and the rest of us is microbes. In the gut, microbes extract nutrients from food. They synthesize vitamins, fight off infection, and reduce inflammation. We are always looking for our next big cure, but we may already be on the verge of one of the largest medical discoveries of all the human microbiome. So allow me to thoroughly discuss all of you today while I <laughs> drop some knowledge on the human microbes. Today, we will first be pushing out some knowledge about our guts, before then doing a knowledge dump on the breakthroughs that have created all of this excitement, and then finally flushing out the amazing future potential in this field. The human gastrointestinal tract is home to one of the most rich, dense, and diverse microbial populations in the human body. We've always known there was something going on down here. The Romans had Sterquilinus, god of feces and digestion. The Japanese had Hani Yasu, who is still commonly found on and under toilets to uh, help things along. Meanwhile, the Aztecs quite literally worshipped poop including believing that gold and silver were just the good bowel movements of their gods. According to the March 2019 edition of the Human Microbiome Journal, Next Generation DNA testing has helped us to identify over 1,000 new gut species. This little invisible world of ours is starting to come into focus, and we are about to learn a lot. From antibacterial soaps, germ-fighting supplements, and even hand sanitizer, many of us believe that all bacteria are just tiny little organisms that give us horrible diseases. That is, in fact, not the case. Even the healthiest among us have far more bacterial cells than human ones. That population of microbes is established at the very beginning of life, and remains as unique as a fingerprint. Science now knows that the wrong balance of bugs in the gut can lead to all sorts of distress, discomfort, and disease. This recognition has led to some incredible discoveries and advancements, and medical professionals are turning to some, well, let's call them creative, ways to right the balance. There have always been stories of weird and unexplained things happening in the belly, and in Texas. Take, for example, the story of a 60-year-old Texas man who stumbled into an emergency room complaining of dizziness with a blood al alcohol concentration of 0.37%. For those of you who don't know how alcohol works, that is a lot. <laughs> However, there was just one hitch. The man had not touched a drop of alcohol all day. Dr. Justin McCarthy was able to figure out that the man's problem was an overabundance of brewer's yeast bacteria. Basically, his intestinal tract was acting like his own internal brewery. And while the worst he suffered were some food hangovers, there are very serious implications when it comes to microbiome imbalance giving us horrible diseases or even killing us. Take, for example, C. diff, or Clostridium difficile which is described by a Wired article as a devastating diarrhea-causing infection. It occurs when a patient takes antibiotics that wipe out the multiplicity of the bacteria in the belly. This makes things worse, sometimes much worse. The FDA reports that C. diff infections occur more than 500,000 times a year, leading to some 30,000 deaths and leaving survivors homebound and permanently ill. The solution, a fecal transplant. Yes, that is exactly what it sounds like. Taking actual feces, 
produced by a healthy person and putting them into the digestive system of a sick person. I know that is absolutely disgusting, but before you poo poo on this idea, <laughs> hear me out. These transplants have an incredibly high success rate. Over 90% of C. diff cases are cured with just a single application, a far higher rate than for most <coughs> antibiotics. Today, Open Biome, a fecal matter cleansing facility, www.givepoop.org, says that it has donated material for over 48,000 fecal transplants so far. The impact of this expanded research shows that focusing on our own microbiomes may solve a host of gastrointestinal issues. But in fact, the future potential might make all of today's already extraordinary advancements seem quaint. Take, for example, the story of Dr. Colleen Kelly, one of the first doctors to provide fecal transplants. One of her patients also suffered from a condition known as alopecia universalis, a condition that was previously thought to be incurable. Essentially, the patient had not been able to grow any hair since they were 16. However, once they got a stool fecal transplant from their sister, they began to grow the hair back. And the bigger shock is this is the common result so, there may be at least some hope for my follically challenged father. may be linked to the millions of gut bacteria living inside of us. One of the more obvious links is that between gut bacteria and obesity. According to a November 24th Medical News Today article, <sighs> Medical News Today article, obese people and thin people have entirely different microbial populations in their guts. Taking the bacteria of someone traditionally thin and transplanting it into someone obese may help balance both sides of that energy balance equation, which would help with our metabolism and influence our desire to exercise and be mobile for the better. Another link is that between gut bacteria and humanity's number one killer, heart disease. A study done by the August 2018 National Institute of Health found that when bacteria is in the digestive tract, oh my God, I'm still laughing, like it metabolizes a compound known as carnitine. Carnitine, in turn, makes a byproduct. The byproduct, in turn, don't laugh a bit about heart disease, Stop laughing. Stop laughing. <laughs> gives us heart disease. The article continues, our gut microbiome are functioning as hormones. All we have to do is work out what language the bacteria are speaking and teach the, and teach the microbiome to treat heart disease instead of causing it. The fecal microbiome represents the... <laughs> The fecal microbiome represents the future of medicine, one in which our own... <laughs> oh, oh, it's one of those things where your brain's like, stop laughing, so you keep laughing, when you definitely should not be laughing. Think about like a funeral or something. Right? Basically, I'm going to try this line for the third time. The fecal microbiome represents the future of medicine. One in which, stop it, one in which our patient's own microbiome may be manipulated to cure or even prevent diseases. Today, <laughs> we have discussed our body's crudest waste product, one that teems with literally millions of bacteria, many of which are still barely known to science. 
We have pushed through today's world of fecal transplants and discussed a future world where we have mastered techniques to deal with some of life's biggest challenges. There is still a powerful ick factor associated with talking about human feces. But for many doctors and many patients, getting over that crap cannot come fast enough. Oh my.